Hello everyone and welcome to this session of the DIPI workshop. In this session, we're going to talk about visualization and all the tools we have made for you to visualize your data, either coming from diffusion acquisitions or some other medical imaging related acquisitions. We also want to use this space to talk about new features that are coming in next releases of DIPI and new features we're working on to push even further what visualization can do for the medical imaging field. Um, my name is Javier Guaje. I'm a PhD student at Carifalidis Research Group. And let's get started. The first tool we're going to cover is Horizon. Horizon is an application already included in DiPi. It comes with a command line interface that can be used as shown in this slide. Horizon was created with the motivation of visualizing different sources of data simultaneously. That includes tractograms, images, and regions of interest can be shown as volumes. But we are not limited to that. Later on this talk, we are going to see how we are planning to include more and more sources of data and push the visualization field to still deliver fast and reliable visualizations. To know more about Horizon, you can type the command dipi horizon -h. In the previous slide, we saw how the command dipi horizon was run with the parameter cluster. This option executes the quick bundles x clustering algorithm, which finds representative centroids of either full brain tractograms or individual bundles passed as input. In this case, on the left, we can see how a full brain tractogram is transformed into this skeletal representation. And on the right, we can see how easy it is to interact with individual centroids rather than interacting with a whole brain tractogram. Selected bundles can be expanded or compressed, but can also be refined by running a second pass of the quick bundles X algorithm. We can repeat this process to create potential model bundles and later on use them in our own subject level analysis or group level analysis to extract bundles of similar shapes in each one of our subjects by using the command dipi rico bundles. We have seen the potential that Horizon gives us when interacting with streamlines, but what else makes Horizon different? After all, things are changing quickly. Technology is rapidly evolving. OpenGL is transitioning into Vulkan, but some other actors are bringing their own ideas to the table. For instance, Apple has succeeded with the development of their own chipsets, which are compatible with their own graphics API, which is Metal. And we have better acquisition protocols that gives us bigger images with higher resolution. Every day we have bigger data sets to use. And we are also trying to do multimodal analysis. To address many of these challenges, we have created Fury. Fury is a spin off of DiPi with the sole purpose of focusing on visualization. So, What's Fury? Fury is a graphics library that delivers high performance 3D scientific visualization in a very easy to use API, which is totally compatible with the Pythonic ecosystem. That means if you can export NumPy arrays, we can find a way to visualize that. But we also have the mission of bringing ideas from CGI, that is video game engines or rendering, movie rendering applications into the scientific visualization field. And from that, our commitment with Horizon is to have speed and scalable visualizations that will solve the problem of bigger data sets and better acquisitions with higher resolution. And also, we are bringing the idea of ad adaptability, which includes things like summarizing a full brain tractogram by the usage of 
quick bundle sex. And we also want the visualization to work for you. So we are working on the interactivity as well. So if you feel like you want to use Fury, please cite us. Here's a paper we have published in the Journal of Open Source Software. Following this idea of performance, this is one of the projects we have created. We call them beer boards. And basically, it's a way to reduce the geometry of objects like spheres into tiny canvases that we can use to draw things on them. So we have reduced the geometry of, of a sphere to four points that create a canvas. Then we draw spheres on them. And by using lighting tricks, we can give the sense of depth and 3D again. So by this simple idea, we can now render millions of spheres, or even we can have simulations that run on these canvases. As I mentioned earlier, we can draw many things on these billboards. For instance, we can draw sine distance functions, which allow us to evaluate if a point X is inside, on the boundary, or outside this function. Each point is evaluated given a particular function, and it will return negative values if a point is inside the function, zero if the point is on the boundary, or a positive value if the point is outside of the function. In this case, we have the SDF for a circle, where P is a vector, R is the radius, and we are not limited to circles, but we have functions to draw tensors or ellipsoids or cross-like shapes that can be later on used to represent directional information in terms of peaks or ODFs. One advantage of these sine distance functions is that we can perform operations at a very low cost. For instance, we can combine two shapes by calculating the minimum value between two functions, or we can find the common area between two functions by calculating the maximum between two SDFs. We can also do shape blending, which is given a certain value take features from one figure and take some other features from other figure. We are not limited to only union, intersection, and shape blending. SDFs can also calculate very basic operations at a very low cost. For instance, translations, rotations. We can scale easily. And we can also do subtraction of figures by tricking with the intersection function. We can find outlines or the silhouette of a figure. We can remove the inner part of a figure. We can also uh, include beauty effects such as round edges, etc. With SDFs, we are not only limited to 2D elements. We can create 3D elements and still have all the potential mentioned in the 2D counterpart. We can use 3D SDFs to create advanced peak and ODFs visualizations and interactions such as with one single object in a very at a very low cost and impact in terms of performance expand a peak into its ODF representation or compress the ODF into its, its peak representation we can clip parts we can apply many operations here 
we have already started to explore SDFs in Fury. Here on the right, we can see some of the shapes that we are currently exploring and supporting. With 3D SDFs, we have access to all the operations we mentioned in the 2D SDFs. For instance, we can see in this slide the union operation between two sine distance functions for spheres and the intersection operations for two sine distance functions of the, of the same spheres. But perhaps the more interesting example here is the shape blending. In this case, there is a shape blending between a cube and a sphere, but in our case, we can use shape blending to easily go from an ODF representation to a peak representation. Another area of interest for us at Fury is geometry amplification. This concept allows us to dynamically expand or compress the geometry of the objects in the scene. We can do this by two ways. The first way is to do small and fixed per primitive amplification operations, which means we can take points, lines, or triangles and either expand them or discard them. The second option is to use tessellation, which give us a better control over the geometry we are going to amplify. In this case, we can expand poly entire polygons or discard entire polygon areas, as we can see in the example on the right here. We can tie the geometry amplification process to some other parameters or elements that are present in the scene, such as the camera. In this example, we see how we create and remove geometry by zooming in and zooming out. This will also give us a, an improvement in performance and is one of the many examples of the things that we can do with this combination of camera plus geometry amplification. Some of these improvements and techniques are already being used in Fury to create new visual elements for Horizon. For instance, we have an example here of a new peak element that will allow the user to create boundaries in which the user will be able to see uh, the specific region of interest of peaks. This element can quickly turn into a per plane visualization at no cost, as you can, as you can see here. The interaction of that element is also fast and responsive. As a background for this slide, these two images are taken from the Human Connecton project. So the interaction that you can see is responsive for, for such kind of data sets, but we are not limited to that kind of images. We can support images with higher resolutions and bigger amount of voxels. Another improvement we are working on, it's a new way to have the same level of interaction for the ODF visualization. ODFs are usually represented as a deformation of a sphere. In this case, we have improved the filtering system of the data. And we are working towards the inclusion of SDFs and geometry amplification to improve the performance of this actor. Finally, we have the goal of making Fury a viable cinematic scientific visualization tool. In cinematic scientific visualization, we seek to communicate science to a broader and non-trained audience. For that, we borrow ideas from the movie making industry to make science more appealing for such an audience. One of the techniques that is heavily used nowadays in this industry 
it's ray tracing. In ray tracing, we try to simulate the effects of light, such as reflections, refractions, shadows, and caustics. There are many ways to solve problems in ray tracing. One of the techniques used in this case is sphere tracing. We can see an illustration of that on the right. And the main problem that ray tracing aims to solve is the rendering equation. We can see the description of that equation here. I want you to focus only on one aspect of the rendering equation, and that is the bidirectional reflectance distribution function that tells us the probability that there is reflection given a point and incidence vector of light and an outgoing vector of light. Here, we have an example of an upcoming feature. In particular, this is a new BRDF that will allow us to model different materials. In this particular case, by using some of these material properties, we can highlight the description of an atlas without occluding all the inner elements of the visualization. This can be used to show networks within the brain or tractograms within the brain. In this last example, we are replacing the BRDF with a physically based refractance distribution function that will permit the recreation of effects such as glass absorption, as we can see here. And in combination with image-based lining, we can take light information from a texture that we can see here as a sky, and the actor will take light information and calculate the reflections and refractions when needed. That would be all for this talk. Thank you so much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed the rest of the workshop. And if you are more interested in DiPy and Fury, please subscribe at DiPy at python.org. And you can contact us on Gitter or Discord. For documentation of our projects, go to DiPy.org or Fury.gl. Thank you.